Hello everyone, welcome back to Shimano City Prep. Today we're tackling chapter 15, Quadratics of the College Panda Math Book. Let's go dive into number one. In the xy plane, what is the distance between the two y-intercept planes of the parabola of x squared minus 3x minus 10? So the <coughs> first thing we need to do is to find the y-intercepts, and we can just do that by factoring. So the, these are the y-intercepts should be 5 and negative 2. And to find the distance, what we can do is to subtract one from another. So 5 minus minus 2 is equal to 7, so the answer is 7. What are the solutions to x squared plus 4x plus 2 is equal to 0? So what we can do here is to use the quadratic formula, which will lead us to get uh, negative 4 plus or minus root 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2, and 2 times 1, and that will lead us with negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 2, which is basically root 8, but simplified, and we can reduce this to get negative 2 plus or minus root 2, so the answer is a. If a is less than 1 and 2a squared minus 7a plus 3a is equal to 0, what is the value of a? So we can just factor this out again, so we get 2a minus 1 and a minus 3 is equal to 0, and since a must be less than 1, a should be equal to 1 over 2, which is also 0 0.5. Question 4, 3x squared plus 10x is equal to 8. If a and b are the two solutions to the equation above and a is greater than b, what is the value of b squared? So what we can do here is to just move the 8 on the other side. So we get 3x squared plus 10x minus 8 is equal to 0. And we can just factor it out. x plus 4, 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. And we know that x is equal to negative 4 or 2 over 3. And since b is less than a, b must be negative 4. So b squared is 16. What is the sum of the solutions 2x minus 3 squared is equal to 4x plus 5? We can just expand this. 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 is equal to 4x plus 5. So 4x squared minus 16x plus 4 is equal to 0. And the sum of the solution is negative b over a, which is negative 16 over 4, so it's 4. In the systems of equations above, c is a constant. For which of the following values of c does the systems of equations have exactly two real solutions? So what we can do here is to substitute the first equation to the second one. So negative 3 is equal to x squared plus cx plus uh, cx, so x squared plus cx plus 3 is equal to 0. And we know that we will have two solutions if uh, the equation above will have two solutions. So in order for this equation to have two solutions, we need to make sure that the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, would be positive. So that will be c squared minus 4 times 1 times 3 is greater than 0, because it must be positive, so c squared negative 2 must be greater than 0, so c squared is greater than 12. So if a is negative 4, then that will be true because it will give a bigger value than 12 when squared, which will be 16. Question 7. At which of the following points does the line with equation y is equal to 4 intersects the parabola of x plus 2 squared minus 5 in the xy plane? So we need to find the intersection point so we can treat the two as a systems equation. So we can substitute again the first to second equation. 4 is equal to x plus 2 squared minus 5. 9 is equal to x plus 2 squared. And we can just root both sides to get plus or minus 3 is equal to x plus 2. So x is equal to negative 5 or 1. So the answer is b. Which of the following equations represent the parabola shown in the xy plane above? And because we know that the vertex here is 3, negative 8, the answer must be A or C. And because the parabola passes through 1, 0, we can use that point to test out our two potential answers. So we can just plug in x is equal to 1 and determine which of it's correct because we need to find the one that suggests that y is equal to 0. This isn't the case for the first one, so the answer is C. 
But what value of t does the equation v is equal to 5t minus t squared result in the maximum value of v? So from the equation, we can kind of rearrange it to t five minus, multiplied by 5 minus t. And we can see that the y-intercepts are 0 and 5. And because the maximum occurs at the vertex, uh, which is the average of the two intercepts, it must be 2.5, right? So the answer is 2.5. The monthly profit of a mattress company can be modeled by the equation above, where P is the profit in dollars and M is the number of mattresses sold. What is the minimum number of mattresses the company must sell in a given month so that it does not lose money during that month? So to find the maximum number of mattresses the company must sell so that it doesn't lose money, we can just set P is equal to zero. M squared minus 100 M minus 120,000 is equal to zero. And we can rewrite this as M minus 400 M plus 300 is equal to zero. So M is negative 300 or 400. And we know it doesn't make sense for the number of mattresses sold to be negative. So M must be 400. So the answer is 400. Question 11 in the system of equations above, A is a constant. For which of the following values of A does the system equation have exactly one real solution? So again, we can substitute the first equation into the second one. So we get negative 3 is equal to AX squared plus 4X minus 4. And we go 0 is equal to ax squared plus 4x minus 1. And because we need the system to have only one real solution, uh, the equation above here should also have one real solution. So this discriminant b squared minus 4ac must be equal to 0 in that case. So we know that b is 4, so we get 4 squared minus 4a negative 1 is equal to 0. So 4a is equal to negative 16, and so a must be negative 4. The answer is 8. The function f is defined above. Which of the following equivalent forms of fx displays the maximum value of f as a constant or coefficient? So what we need to do here is to complete the square. So we can just divide everything by negative 1 first. And that will lead us to get negative y is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 20. And we can divide the middle terms by 2 to get 3. And we can square that to get 9, right? So we can put the negative 3 inside the parentheses of x, and we can subtract by negative 9 at the end. So we've got this, x minus 3 squared minus 20 minus 9, and we can just simplify everything back and multiply everything back by negative 1, which will lead us to get y is equal to negative x minus 3 squared plus 29, so the answer is b. The last two questions here in the quadratic equation above, a and k are constants. If the graph of the equation in the xy plane is a parabola with vertex 5, negative 32, what is the value of a? So we know that the one of the x-intercepts is 3, right? And since the x-coordinate of the vertex is 5, which lies in the midpoint between the two x-intercepts, we can say that the other x-intercept is 7. So let's say k equals to 7, which will give us y is equal to a times x minus 3 times x minus 7. And we can just plug in the vertex as a point to solve for a. So we'll get 32 is equal to a, oh, negative 32, negative 32 is equal to a times 5 minus 3 times 5 minus 7. And these will give us negative 4, so a must be equal to 8. In the xy plane, the line y is equal to 2x plus b intersects the parabola y is equal to x squared plus bx plus 5 at the point 3k. If b is a constant, what is the value of k? So we can just substitute 3k into both equations. k is equal to 2 times 3 plus b and k is equal to 3 squared plus 3b plus 5. And this is a systems equation, so we can just substitute the first to the second equation. So we get 2 times 3 plus b is equal to 3 squared plus 3b plus 5. So we will get 6 plus b, and that will be 3b plus 14. So negative 8 is equal to 2b, so b is equal to negative 4. And since k is equal to 6 plus b, 6 minus 4 is equal to 2, so the answer should be c. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you stay tuned for the next chapter.